All right, hey internet, welcome back to another video. Uh, it's not that late, but I had like an hour long, not even nap, and I feel great. It, I like didn't fall asleep. It's almost like I'm coming out of a great meditation session. Anyway, welcome back to the Reading Ramble, or welcome to the Reading Ramble if you're new here. Uh, I just review what I read this month, slash give my thoughts on it, and then state my goals. And this month, <laughs> I didn't meet those goals, but that's okay. God, I have no structure for this. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm a student at NYU. I'm in my last term. I'm studying computer science and linguistics, which will actually be very relevant today. Yeah, I want to read more and I've always wanted to read more. Um, I made a video a while ago, which you can check out here. Pretty much one of my, you know, big quote unquote arguments for why I stopped wanting to read was just high school took the fun out of it. It made the motivation getting a good grade in the quiz or something like that. And so those are some tips to break that. Because I haven't read much this month really, I have had some thoughts that I'll talk about in the second half of this video. So just to get out of the way, I read three books this month, two technically, if you know, depending on how I'm counting it. Uh, I read Rangers Apprentice 4. I do want to read the rest, but I just haven't gotten around to it really. Um, simply because I wanted to, you know, focus my reading time on some other book. I've found that it's kind of fascinating that, you know, I can sit down and read 200 or whatever pages of young adult fiction rather easily. Um, takes me longer to do other books. So enough dilly dallying, Mark. Um, the first book of the month is Chaos Monkeys. And I finished this like a week and a half, two weeks into August. Super good book. My dad gave this to me uh, when I was a... I think sophomore in high school, so like 10th grade or year nine. But UK, I think I was like 15 or 16. And I remember thinking, this is going over my head, like I have no interest in this. And so I put it away. Uh, and because I've been looking for jobs recently as a software engineer, I kind of became relevant again. And God, was it relevant. The first half of the book, I don't, I don't know, it's not, I'm, even if you're not a techie, it's a very readable book because the guy kind of goes over everything. Uh, he put many footnotes in here, but pretty much he, the first half is about his startup that he started and how he got acquired by Twitter um, and a lot of the, the startup hell and life kind of in that startup world, I guess. And it really did make me think two things. At first I was like, wow, you know, it'd be cool to try a startup. And then by the time he, uh, not really a spoiler, but goes to work for Facebook. It, <laughs> I do not have the, the gall for this, but it's really cool insight into that. And the second half is all about his time at Facebook and talks a lot about how ads work and marketing. A little disturbing. Granted, it is like five years after this book came out or something like that as of now. So it's not like it's new information, but it's really cool to not really the detail he goes in, but the, the angle at which he approaches all the stuff on ads and whatnot. And what I love most about it, I think, is that it reads kind of like Mark Manson, uh, if he's the author of Subtle Art of Not Giving a Frick. And it's just like, it's like crude language, but it's not overly crude, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I, I really did like it. And if you're thinking of starting a startup, I guess I would definitely go for it. Uh, if you know, there are times when I was reading and I was like, you know, what? I'm going to sit down and code right now. So if, if you're doing software engineering or whatever, it's it's just a cool book to read in terms of what this guy's position was in all of this. And the second book I read, I don't have it in person. So PDF of cracking the coding interview. I interviewed, well, not really interviewed. I did an online coding assessment for Duolingo last Friday. I haven't heard back from them yet. <laughs> I did like, okay. But uh, when I got i made a vgt about this if you want to you know check this out but pretty much when i got the email i was like wow i need to entirely change my opinion on leak coding and you know this thing i really hated and found totally arbitrary and i totally changed my mindset on it 180 and this book helped with that i still have a pretty good grasp on data structures and algorithms but if you are doing coding interviews uh i would definitely give it a read i i, I didn't read it cover to cover. I didn't do the problems that were in it. Great interview tips on like, you know, what mindset to be in because for me going into a, an interview, it's kind of like, okay, start here, then go here, finish this and then, you know, get to this. Otherwise I'll get caught up in starting the bigger picture and then doing some niche thing. And then, oops, I've just wasted 20 minutes. So it's, it's very, very helpful for the coding interview thing. And I kind of grinded that out in like four or five days. And yeah, so it just helped me break these assumptions and mindsets that I had about lead coding or the grind for the coding interview. So I'll state my goals for next month in just a moment. Cause I'm returning to the want to read four books. 
But some observations that I made, right, uh, this month slash in the last three days. I was thinking because of this aforementioned leak code thing, uh, you know, when can I find time to do leak coding? Because my classes are starting, I have to cut some projects from my project list. I realized that I want to make leak coding and getting better at these coding problems and by practicing them a more consistent habit, but I don't want to dedicate like an hour every other day to it. Exactly. I should, but I don't really want to do that. I want to do it more spontaneously. And I decided that instead of saying, okay, I'll do an hour every other day during my drop in tutoring hours, if nobody shows up slash, you know, nobody is here yet, just leak code, you know, don't watch TV or work on other schoolwork, get that done outside of those hours as you would normally intend to and work on leak code instead because it's relevant to the hour. This does two things, I guess. One, it makes sure that I do it. Uh, it's a nice alternative, something with habits uh, that I have found very helpful that I got from Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg from a while ago, I read that ages ago, was that when you're trying to break a habit or build a new one, it can be easier to replace something. For example, if I'm trying to stop watching YouTube, which I've come a long way, uh, you know, instead of watching YouTube, don't try and do nothing, try and actively, you know, read instead. And the second thing it does is lets me do something more spontaneously. I don't have to schedule in leak code. I don't have to worry about, oh, it's Thursday. I got to get leak code in sometime. All I have to do is hold myself responsible for if no one's here, work on leak code or, you know, work on a coding project. So, you know, that's kind of a digression, but it led me to apply this to other areas. For example, reading. One book I've been reading, a textbook is Take Kim's Grammar Guide for Japanese. You can check out my language learning logs over here. Uh, I've been teaching myself Japanese for the past three months and have pretty much committed to it for a very long time because I want to become conversationally fluent. And I was reading this textbook on the subway. And I was only doing that because I was doing flashcards when I was on the subway, but that really, it doesn't work because you're passively reading something and it's something that I should be taking notes on and internalizing more deeply. I decided that for the subway, I should start making subway reading time. So for example, if I'm in drop-in tutoring, I should leak code. If I'm on the subway, I should be reading. Now, the one difficulty for me is that I love to listen to music on the subway instead. Today, I went into the city and I brought a book with me and I read it a little bit on the way there. And it was, I'll mention it in a minute, but I just listened to music on the way back and you know got lost in thought. So that isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I want to actively not be on my phone, I guess. And when I have commutes to class, it's about 25, 30 minutes. So if I'm waiting for the train or whatever, I feel like I can get a lot of reading in. And the the thing with this month is that my reading was pretty consistent actually. It was just in small chunks. And so alongside on the train, and you know, this is something that may be more applicable to people, instead of defaulting to something like YouTube or Netflix, default to reading for a bit. Uh, Cause I definitely did watch a little more TV, specifically anime for Japanese, but a little more TV than I really would have liked to. So instead of, you know, oh, it's breakfast time. Let me put on a 15 minute moist critical video. It's breakfast. Let me, mindfully eat, I guess, and then read for 10 minutes or something like that. So the idea here that I'm trying to get across is that maybe reading isn't, I guess it's not even a maybe, but reading shouldn't be, I need to do five hours of this every week. It should be, I do this, I guess unconsciously in the end, but you know, I do this when I'm bored. I do this when I'm on the train. I do this for 10 minutes before bed or whatever. Uh, you know, if I can't sleep, another rule that I want to make along to the subway thing, you know what, I'm gonna make that rule now. If I can't sleep, screw the phone. If I'm listening to music, I, eh, whatever. Stop listening to music. But if I really can't sleep, you know, pick up a book and start reading. So yeah, food for thought if you, you know, want to take that uh, and do whatever you want with it. Uh, if you want to make reading more of a habit, see if there's something small you can replace. Uh, instead of, before you watch the next episode, just read for five minutes. While you're waiting in line for lunch at the dining hall, read the book that you have on hand. And that's actually why Kindles are super helpful and why I need to start using that more because while I love reading physical books and having them all, I like to get rid of books when I'm done. This is going to a friend, which is fantastic. So goals for the month of September. Uh, honorable mention, Japanese short stories. Now that I'm putting together grammar and stuff, uh, I'll be reading these, but I won't really talk about this. Now my original goal is four books a month, so I'm gonna be continuing with that. And last part, I believe I mentioned uh, Alan de Botain, The Pleasures and Sorrows of Work, with the semester starting up, uh, all the more reason to read this. I don't think it's gonna be what I think it is, <laughs> having flipped through it uh, a little more than, you know, just what I did now, about two or so weeks ago. Letters to Milena, this was the book that I brought with me on the train today. Kafka, I just need to finish this. I read this first 50 pages three months ago at this point. I, I like Kafka's writing. I loved Metamorphosis in high school. Uh, if you haven't read it, I would recommend it. It's very, very, it's a short story by definition. The third book is A Thousand Splendid Suns. Uh, I 
I think I read the Kite Runner ages ago, but I've had this on my list for a while and I think it's good to, you know, if you count Pleasures and Sorrows of Work as Philosophy, Letters to Milena, Literature? Philosophy? I'm not really sure what to jump, categorize that as. Uh, this is more of a story. Uh, and then the last one is Musashi Dokoro. Uh, this I got ages ago because I saw some Musashi quotes on Instagram that I really liked. And it's, I guess, analyzing Musashi's uh, quotes from uh, by people from different walks of life. So yeah, those are the four books for the upcoming month. I really do want to read all of them. And I will attempt to implement my little... Uh, reading on the subway and sleeping thing. So yeah, let me know what you're reading in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. What have you read? Have you have you made any milestones? Uh, what are some tips, you know, for when you read? The only reason I got through Chaos Monkey so quickly is because it was an engaging book, more so than I thought it was going to be. And it, you know, I could just sit down and consistently read, but something happened the latter half of the month where I didn't really get through much, whether it was because of Lee Code or what, but hopefully we can, we can get three books next month. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, don't forget to subscribe turn that button gray if you haven't already like all that fun stuff people always ask you to do i've gotten some really engaging comments in the last two or so weeks and it, it always makes it a lot more uh, dare i say interesting to upload these videos so yeah thanks yet again have a good one and as always don't forget to stay awesome see you next month